Here are the materials that I'm going to be using to finish my portrait composition and my uh, background and everything else that I pretty much want to do with my drawing. As you can see, I like to have everything at my disposal uh, laid out in front of me. So once I have an idea and I have inspiration, I immediately just react and grab uh, a, a you know what I need to draw whether it's a, a watercolor here I have all the colors ready to go I have a small palette here but I have a large palette here on a white ceramic plate as you can see I already have some of the primary colors there that I'm ready to go um, with that I have some watercolor brushes I have a, a large a one inch I have a three-quarter inch um, watercolor brush remember those are different than oil painting brushes I have a, a, a round watercolor brush here that I can use to uh, make some interesting line. I have a small detailed watercolor brush. Um, I have a Sumi brush for some nice, good, uh, exciting, um, you know, um, more gestural marks. And I have a uh, marker here that's uh, both a uh, brush marker, so it flexes almost like a calligraphy marker, and it also has a nice, good, hard line. So. Um, and uh, I have an array of pencils here, all drawing pencils from charcoal pencils all the way to soft and hard detail pencils, sharpened and ready to go. For instance, this is a 2B here, and I have 4B, HB, and of course, like I said, a charcoal pencil uh, so I can have some good line and some good, um, and some good uh, dark shadows if I need to. Again, this is creative drawing, uh, mixed media drawing, so we pretty much use anything that we want. And that's what's great about working on good, uh, strong papers that you can really apply some mixed media. Uh, other larger brushes I have, I have a glaze brush here or a bamboo, a larger Sumi brush. Uh, so that's a great, large, exciting mark. Takes a lot of courage to kind of use something like this. Once it's on, it's on, but sometimes that can really just uh, direct the whole idea, the whole inspiration, in a certain a certain path. So um, I recommend some large brushes because sometimes you just don't know what to do. Make a large mark, see where it takes you, and don't uh, be afraid to do stuff like that with some larger brushes. It could even be an old household, you know, real old paintbrush that you use for the porch or something, something aggressive. Um, I also have uh, water here. I have two jars of water so I can clean my brush and have a good clean source of water, supply of water. My Sumi ink with its own um, uh, palette here so I can really separate those blacks. Remember, Sumi ink is different from your watercolor, so make sure that you have that separated, but that's for your exciting, uh, just large marks, exciting brush strokes, and just some action kind of marks. I have an array of um, all the colors that I need of markers. Sometimes the best way is to go graphic on a certain part. Again, I like to use everything to draw within. Of course, I have some Prisma co color for some uh, more controlled marking. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter if you are going to use everything, uh, just have it available in case it's ready to go. Uh, in case the idea just, just happens, you are not hindered in material and uh, you have everything at your disposal to, to create what you want. Also, as always, charcoal, compressed charcoal, vine charcoal. Um, it's always good to have charcoal and an eraser, either it's a gum eraser or a white eraser, but charcoal should always be in front of you just in case you want to go all the way back to the basics to make a mark that you can uh, get rid of to plan something out. Charcoal is always the way to go. And a sharpener could be a box cutter or a um, regular pencil sharpener. Again, I like a box cutter so I can go ahead and carve these shapes that I want on my pencil. Uh, the point is, is to uh, get yourself all the mediums that you can think of uh, in front of you because that does make a difference. If they're not in front of you, um, sometimes you just forget about that type of uh, color or that process or that material and it could be the one that you're looking for or the one that keeps you in front of the sheet of paper and keeps you making the marks. That's really what drawing a good drawing should do is keep you in front of that sheet of paper and, and uh, the inspiration to keep working uh, should uh, flow naturally and it should be fun and sometimes to have fun have all the toys in front of you and then you can uh, just jump in <laughs> and see what happens so I'm just going to start off and I've already applied some water to the areas first so I'm just going to work on the background and I'm just wetting down 
this area here, not the head, not this triangular shape, not this platform, just everything else. I'm, I've already given it a few coats of uh, water with my large one inch watercolor brush. Again, any brush pretty much works. And you're gonna have to do it a few times because uh, you'd be surprised on how much water that paper soaks up. And then I'm going just to grab my yellow because uh, I've just decided to start off on a pretty bright color. I want a pretty hot background to start off with. So I'm just going to add a base color and I want you to do the same. You just, you know, add any color you want in that background area. And since it's wet and we're using a wash technique, don't worry about detail. Just try to get a tone that you enjoy. Maybe a shape that you like, whatever it is. It's just a, ba a base coat, so allow it to be a little more freer on the uh, movement. Doesn't need to be anything specific, just to get you started. You can see I'm pretty much loosely applying it. Not really worry too much about, you know, drips or crossing lines. fact, consider drips, you know, something to work with. But if drips get a little bit out of control, I'm going to switch to my round brush so I can get inside some of these areas here. You see, I'm just dipping my brush in water and just moving that color around. I'm already applying some line forms. Uh, what's nice about watercolor when you're using it in this scale, because this is pretty large uh, scale for a watercolor, but again, what's nice about creative drawing is that you, you mix painting and drawing and watercolor and printmaking and collage, all these different techniques into one image. Um, but you can see how I'm already and I'll do a close-up, but there's already some line being formed because now I'm using overlapping what I've washed with this smaller round brush. And just within that time frame, the paper dries, um, which allows what, are your, what you're overlapping, like what I'm doing here, to pop out. So um, paper's great that way because it soaks and it dries at all these different levels and consistencies and then you can really add layers of different colors and washes and that's my first step to kind of get me going and then I'll sit back and look at it and make, more, make another decision as I go along. So here's just a close-up image of that first step of just applying a background and um, you can see how there is just a little bit of texture that I've created. Again, just to get things going. A nice simple wash in the background. Make sure that you choose a primary color. Uh, so that would be red, blue, yellow, 
um, green. Um, and that's just a good place to start because uh, then we can wash over and mix over that to create any color that we want. So just a quick view of the first step and then I will continue on and then at some point just start drawing. I think that it's important for you to develop the confidence just to begin and hopefully the colors and the forms and the lines just flow. So I've grabbed my smaller one inch watercolor brush and I'm working on that lighter area on the horizon line and just kind of making some interesting shapes. So I'm overlapping the area with some water again, not up here, just on that horizon line. I want to get some depth and maybe a interesting range and I'm watching to not go so far in this area here where I have this design and and then um, I'm going to grab a little bit of blue here so um, which is a, a nice bright blue turquoise blue and then I'm going to do a little wash of that and I'm just going to kind of use my flat brush just to kind of make an interesting kind of shape in the background kind of some interesting blue mountains it's up to you if you want to proceed this direction like I'm doing but you can try to make your own mountain range or make your own background form shape whatever it is and that's just going to give me a little bit of information in the background to already start to create hopefully some sort of a environment that can speak to me as to where this is maybe in some areas add a little bit more and what's nice again about that paper is that it just it, it kind of dries immediately and then soaks up the water immediately and then allows you to overlap marks and different shapes so use that brush and that's a pretty good second step for me I like that next I've grabbed my smaller watercolor brush again and I'm going to be working in this middle ground so I've done the background or created a, a horizon line and um, kind of some distance with that yellow up here down now I'm going to try to bring in this middle ground space right behind the portrait here and I've already given it a coat and you see how you know I, I work fairly loosely when I do my drawings um, I don't worry too much about the accuracy and that's what's great about washes is that the more you layer the more detail uh, the more accurate you can make it so it, uh, even though we're dealing with the wash that you can not erase or get rid of because we're working with essentially inks and um, and uh, uh, pigments don't worry about it because you can gain detail as you go along uh, I have also grabbed my um, red so I have a red here that I'm going to uh, do in the middle ground. Uh, so I've used red, yellow, and blue. Again, kind of sticking with some primary colors. And I'm going to wash right on that background. See what happens. I mean, of course, I, I don't know how it's going to look until I apply it. So just jump right in. I'm going to try to create some horizontal strokes and see how where that takes me constantly adding water so I can continue a, a flow so let that it's 
Sometimes you just gotta let it do what it wants to do, the, the, the medium. Okay, done some work over here. Make sure hurry up and put them down here. Make sure I'm keep keeping it wet as I'm adding my color. I want a consistent texture. I'm gonna switch to my round brush here so I can get inside this area a little bit more accurately. I'm just also creating some interesting just shapes that I enjoy washing and again remember you can overlap Maybe give it some line. Again, I'm with my smaller round brush and that's allowing me to do some drawing. Just creating some textures in the background. Trying to make it move back. And yes, what's great about working with the real medium um, inks and paints and charcoals is that it's a whole other dimension of of decisions and and uh and uh you know you're dealing with infinite amounts of actions with the soaking of the paper the dripping of the water the drying time um all those layers of happenings physical things that are happening just allows the depth to almost just um uh, happen just by the sheer action of you using real materials let it let a process develop that and you see how I'm kind of creating some interesting vibration mirage movement I'm trying and um, I can keep going with that texture as far as I want because remember that paper is drying and uh, every time I touch it it's just creating a little bit more of a layer on top of that drying color create some distance maybe just a little bit of definition in some of those hills back there just so. now I'll zoom out so you can see that blue So you can see how, well, with that red, it's really, it's really done something that now I, you know, I, I have to work with and continuously maybe add some texture. And then here, here's where I can add more yellow to it. Uh, maybe put in some green. But uh, most importantly is to step back and to constantly observe and look from a distance so you can really see how your composition is flowing and how the textures are working. Um, so uh, it, it turns into a lot of fun pretty fast once you start layering. So my foreground is at, at a beginning point where now I can really start to make decisions on the four points of interest 
that I have and, and already starting to do with some color choices. So uh, green would be a good um, option, maybe in some areas, combinations of, um, of blues and maybe some purples. So start to mix some of these primary colors that you have, you know, and you have some green already kind of uh, arriving with that mixture of the washers and the blue and the uh, yellow here. So maybe I can bring some of that green out, obviously, to the plant. It's probably a better choice. Um, but again, anything can happen. Your plant can be any color that you want. Your world can be any uh, arrangement of colors that you can imagine. I'm going to be working in this area right here. So again, I've already done one layer of water. I'm just going to do it one more time. And I think I'm going to, that's where I'm going to put my green. Again, the sometimes the easiest way to start on some color choices is to just use the primary colors and see what that takes you. So I have my green mixed up, just straight green. Kind of thinking of a uh, emerald kind of pathway or stream or a who knows I'm gonna do a real light green because I don't want to really overpower it just yet again you know take your time as you are making decisions and it's gonna take you a few days and just live with it for a while stare at it so next i've decided to add some purple to the body with a torso of the figure here not the face because i think i'm going to going to use some markers for that but I've already washed so I have some purple here mixed so I'm just going to do a simple wash first I've added a little red to that purple I'm going to leave a little bit of the white on the neck, so hopefully I can get some separation. And I kind of like the fade of the shoulder to a light pale, so I'm going to keep that tonal range going here on the shoulder here. So we'll go from a dark, add a little bit more red here on this side, see what happens. But that's good enough for me. That's for now for a night light purple wash. Then I can later on go add some darker tones overlapping after that dries in a bit. So I'm going to move into the face here to get 
some finer details and some finer shape. I've done a lot of washing. I've created an atmosphere. I kind of feel like I'm figuring out who this person is and, and just uh, more detail now. Um, so I moved to my smaller round brush. I've already wet this shape here that I've created. And of course, you know, you're gonna do it your own way. You can do this loosely, you can draw, you can gesture some face, whatever it is. Again, I'm just showing you uh, how I pro uh, process and, and use these stages to, to build a drawing. And I mixed up a little bit of orange here, kind of a, a hot yellow. And then I'm going to get some further definition. Uh, when I start adding some markers or some colored pencils, you know, of course, I'm going to need that to dry before I kind of do some of that work, but it doesn't take long for that paper to dry. I can just move around the whole drawing, you know, and treat it as a whole instead of kind of focus on, you know, one area at a matter of time. See how I'm, I'm, I'm working throughout. I'm kind of moving in and out and, and really just trying to build the drawing organically instead of focusing too long on one part. I, I move around. Of course, you're gonna develop your own process but, uh, but uh, a good trick is to treat the drawing as a whole so there's a consistency in the energy, the texture, the mark making, and, and everything else. So I'm moving to the cactus here and soaked a few of these flat forms. And I'm going to do a blue-green on just these certain areas here that I've already prepped. Now I want it kind of darker, so I want it to kind of stand out because, uh, or have more intense color because uh, it's in the, um, it's in front of us, it's in the foreground. So I'm just going to kind of do some shapes again, kind of going for more a blue-green. Still just kind of working in a beginning stage here, even on these forms here, but trying to merge some of the color together now. So I've got blue and uh, green here. So let's start kind of creating some color that is a combination of the primaries. So some secondary colors might be interesting. Move to my larger brush so I can try to blend some of that color into the larger shape. I always have a towel in case I want to soak up some of the drips that might be occurring. Now, I don't really um, mind drips. I think drips can can help you with decisions. And of course, um, I like putting hurdles in front of some of my designs where I have to deal with some accidents just to give it a more, uh, you know, freer look in my opinion. So, you know, it's really up to you. Uh, again, you can always work flat when you're working with techniques like this, you know, washing and more of a watercolor technique. Um, so again, it's up to you. But drips to me kind of just make the 
drawing into more of an object where it's a uh, you know, it's something that occurred. It's something that cannot be recreated. It's a moment. Um, and it's not trying to assume that what we're working with is a watercolor material. I'm not trying to make it look like an actual, you know, realistic form. I, I want the process and, and that's the type of art I like. I like seeing work and process and material. Okay, I kind of like that for now as just kind of some placement of some blue-green. Then I'll move into another color for those other uh, petals uh, going something completely intense. So we'll see what happens. So I've soaked these shapes here and I've decided to go with an intense blue for now. A light intense blue just in a certain area. I'm just going to try to... Soak a little bit of that water up and then just pretty much try to wash it to a nice paler blue. Again, we'll just see what happens. And remember, all the all these steps that I'm doing here is just the first initial wash. Um, it really is just to help me begin. I mixed a little yellow in there to see what happens. Ah, there we go. That green really helped that blue a lot. Of course, I'm going to, like I was just saying, I was, you know, I'm going to be layering this with more color markers. Um, so uh, don't worry about, you know, messing up. If you feel that's something that you're, you've done or do not worry about that because that's what's great about these washes that they're so thin and, uh, you know, you can just layer on top of that if you're using, you know, good paper. more yellow on that one will be up here. Go ahead and get some more yellow on this stem form here. Again, just adding information, making decisions, applying when you feel that that is the correct one, not worrying about it if it doesn't come out um, exactly the way that you envision at that moment. We are on a journey of building a drawing with decisions and trusting those decisions, trusting that those decisions will eventually work themselves out as you continuously work, apply, and try to envision the image. And listen to the image. Listen and look. And when I say listen, I know that sounds a little, um, you know, esoteric, of course, but it really is a, a, a technique of, of uh, looking, observing, making decisions, and listening to your imagination what it says to you and your subconscious and also um, what it shows you image-wise in your subconscious. Sometimes, again, you have to step away, assess it, have a cup of coffee, and then come back and, and just look at it and live with it for a while. But it will happen. It will create uh, an image if you just allow the process to guide you. Down here to this shape on the chest of the figure, I want to kind of try to do something kind of a copper metal color. So I'm going to start off, I've already soaked uh, the outside shape, not the center diamond. I kind of want to keep that 
there. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a simple yellow, just like what I did in the face. But I will add a little bit of red in a bit to see if that gives me some interesting copper tones. Kind of envisioning a uh, copper spear, uh, yeah, spear tip of some sort or device instrument. Maybe even a piece of jewelry or regalia on the torso here. Um, I, I'm envisioning a uh, an interesting, very creative Native American individual standing in the landscape of the hot desert landscape of some sort. Don't know exactly where this is, but it's coming to me. So I'm adding a little bit more yellow on that ed edge. Adding a little bit of red to see what happens if I Soften that yellow a bit with just a bit of red. Again, when that dries, I can apply another tone, maybe a brown, just to give it a little more coppery feel. There we go. Yeah, I like that so far. So here is a good stopping point to step back, take a look, and see if you like what's happening so far. This is the step where we're just washing some color onto the areas that we want to emphasize and of course create an atmosphere that we can then proceed on with some detail with some markers, some more watercolor, some ink, some pen and ink, some prismacolor and uh, I'll be showing that in a another video but so far I've made some choices that I have to deal with now and that's what is the main aspect of working with watercolor and inks and washes on a creative drawing is that you pretty much have to deal with it once it's on because everything that we're working with is transparent or very linear um, even the uh, washing of the sumi ink the black inks will uh, allow the underneath coat to be seen so there's a sense of transparency that is really fun to work with but uh, also uh, you, know, uh, you know forces you to to work with and live with the decisions that you have made which I think is a very interesting way of working because um, you know you can't hide anything it's, it's going to be there and you're going to have to work with it but in the end it creates a very very nice uh, uh, palimpsest or, or, or a layering of the past decisions and just creates a more dynamic, more layered, more uh, uh, image that has a lot more depth and then in the end has a lot more content and meaning and um, uh, the viewer can really swim in those layers of washes. Um, as you can see, um, it's, it's already happening in some interesting parts of the drawing. I, I'm enjoying the neck, I'm enjoying that movement of the back uh, area where the red is swirling and moving um, you can see there's a big contrast between the structure of the face that is very gridded out and 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 shaped and formed and then you have this more of a chaos movement all of that is creating interesting imagery in the viewer and especially with me um, I'm leaving these areas blank because I want to go in there and do some uh, detail work with some more pencils, some more watercolor, some more uh, markers. Um, so that stuff I'm not going to wash until I have some more solid def uh, 
decisions on what's going on up here. I'll be showing that in a new video. And of course, uh, more detail is going to happen in the foreground area uh, where we have the plant form. And then, um, you know, who knows what's going to happen on, on, on these petals here. Who knows what kind of uh, textures I'm going to put. Um, but uh, it's, it's ready to go. Uh, there's a, um, an identity already developed. Now it's just for me to, uh, my job to bring it out um, and to whatever texture I want. Uh, but then again, uh, I'm going to work as a whole, meaning that I will uh, work throughout the whole drawing um, at all times. So I have a consistent texture, consistent um, thought process, and of course, it's treated with the same amount of energy throughout the whole drawing. And I believe in that. I believe that if you disperse your ideas throughout the frame um, in any type of art that you make, and that can be metaphorically speaking or even uh, physically with the square fr frame or the triangular frame or the horizontal format we're working with, um, if you disperse that energy throughout, uh, you will uh, find something because there was clues and there is um, uh, information that I've already placed that will draw out uh, the, the image, the content, the meaning, and the reason why I'm doing this. Um, so I hope you had fun with this step of the process. I hope you have fun uh, washing color and letting it soak into the paper and letting it drip and letting it flow into each other. Um, I hope that you uh, are at peace with uh, making your drawing, making art and working with color. And uh, hopefully you will uh, develop some more ideas and maybe look at some references outside in the springtime. So uh, there's plenty of information that the world gives us to continue our drawing as far as we want. And um, uh, I will be making another video showing you the next step of the process that I would take. I do hope that uh, you have fun again with your project. And I thank you very much for your time and your attention.